dye pot is going to be the cherry inner bark. So it's cherry bark. Um, I don't have a whole lot of it. I only had 50, well actually I think it came up to 60 grams. So what I'm going to do, because the yarn that I'm putting in it is right at 100 grams, I think that's 102 or something like that, I'm going to put this in it, which is 60, and then I'm going to put all of what was in the sun teas. They didn't give me a whole heck of a lot of color out in the garden, so there should be a lot of color left in them. So between the two of them, I'm hoping that should be right around 100% weight of goods. So anyways, let's go ahead and get our, our uh, little tea bag here made. Now this is an isopropyl alcohol. And let's get this wound up. And I will put this in the dye pot. And then I will do the same thing with the Brazil wood. The Brazil wood, though, I'm not putting in the sun tea stuff. Um, it gives such great colors, it's not necessary. And it's in water. Um, is it in water? Yeah, it's in water. It gave wonderful colors in water. So I saw absolutely no reason to, to waste my alcohol for it. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, so I'm going to put this in the dye pot and get it started. Then I will get the Brazil wood in the dye pot and get it started, and I'll talk to you in a minute. Check out that Brazil wood. And this isn't even up to boiling yet. Wow, beautiful. This is our cherry bark. Mm, and we'll see what it comes out to be like. I have to reserve judgment. Okay, I thought I would just show you what I'm doing with the uh, the t-shirts and stuff that I'm putting in the natural dye pots. Um, I'm doing different folds and stuff on them, but like this one here, because it already has a pattern on it, um, when I did the color removal on it, I overdid it, and so it's kind of a boring eh, beigey color, brown, tan, whatever you want to call it. And so I'm going to stick this in the Brazil wood part. But since it's already got a pattern on it and everything, uh, which we just used um, marbles with rubber bands to create this pattern and everything. Anyways, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to just, I'm just going to wad it all up and tie it real good with, uh, I just buy this cheap acrylic yarn that's not good enough for anything else. I know, I probably just made a bunch of you people mad, but I'm sorry, I hate acrylic. Uh, anyways, this is what I use to tie it up with because A, it's strong, B, um, it doesn't absorb a lot of dye. I mean, it does absorb a little, but it washes out and everything, but uh, it's good and it's strong and it's cheap. So um, I use that to tie it up with. So I'm going to start here at the bottom and I'm just going to start wadding. And I just basically, I start in the middle and I just start wadding it all together. And the more bumps and wrinkles and everything that it has in it, the better. Now when I get to the sleeves, I kind of just wad them up by themselves. And then wad this down. So basically what I have is a wad. <laughs> and so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take um, the acrylic yarn and again the more wrinkles and tighter this is the more fun patterns and stuff you get on it so I'm just going to tie it and then I'm just going to take and do it in like a almost like a asterisk fashion where I just go and under and at this point I'm actually going to start pulling it really tight And there's nothing fancy about this method. It's just getting it so that the dye doesn't absorb evenly in the in the dye pot and everything. So, and then what I'm going to do here is I'll just take the tail from where I started, tie it. Now this is a, this T-shirt has been mortened in tannin and aluminum acetate, and um, it's wet. I mean, I spun it out in the washing machine so it's not like soaking wet or anything, but it is wet. And so that is ready for the dye pot. Now, let me show you a couple of other things that I want to do. It's like I have a little drawstring bag here. It is all nice and flat and everything, so we can actually have some fun with this one. 
Um, it again with the natural dyes and this this being wet, it seems to really absorb, and so you're not going to get the sharp edges and stuff like that that you would with the like fiber reactive dyes. But I'm still going to fold this and have some fun with it because it will. I'm hoping it will affect how the color is put on there. So like this one here should be almost like a leaf type of thing. This one here I'm hoping will actually show some of the stripes. And again, I'm just going to tie it really, really tight around with the cheap acrylic yarn. And again, I'm pulling it pretty snug. And not only am I going to go down, I'm going to go back up it. These long ones are a little awkward. And again, I'm going to use the tail from the other end to tie it off with. So, this is one rel trust bag. Okay. So, and then um, I've got a long sleeve t shirt that I want to do. And I think instead of wadding this one, I think I'm actually going to try folding it and see if I can get any kind of patterning it on it at all. I, like you can tell, this has been definitely been amortented with the uh, the tannin. And the fun part is, is the tannin is not even on it, so already we got kind of a, a really cool modeled type look, almost a marble look. And so I've already got that in the mortand, so I think I'm going to do some folding on this one here and see what we can come up with. So, um... You know, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a bullseye. So basically you grab here and then tie it. I will admit rubber bands does make this a lot easier. I just don't have any rubber bands right now. so And I have plenty of this acrylic yarn. And I think I'm going to go ahead and go down this again. So this is the main part of the pattern, so I really kind of would like to have this show up. So I think I'm going to tight this up really tight and go up and down it a few times. See if I can get it to be more of a resist than what I've gotten in the past. Now on the sleeves, rather than just have them out there, I think I'm going to fold those back in on themselves. And then truss them up like that. Might make a different patterning. I don't know. This is an experiment. And this is how we learn, right? All right. Let's go back down it again. Again, I'm trying to pull this as tight as possible. All right. Get it down here toward the bottom. And again, I'm going to use the tail from the... I tied it on to tie it off. And we'll see what this one looks like. I have one more thing that I want to put in the dye pod. <clears throat> and that's this canvas bag. So, because it's got a pleated bottom, I pull the pleated out. Otherwise, um, I noticed on another bag that it, <clears throat> the fold inside does act as a resist. So, how should we fold this one? Um, let's see. <coughs> we folded the other one in accordion in this direction. Let's fold this one in an accordion in this direction and see what happens. And then we'll just put the straps on the other side. How's that? Now, let's tie that baby up. And from experience on another bag that I did, I'm actually going to go up and down this one more time. And I'm going to really see if how tight I can get this without breaking the string, obviously. It's going to look like a mummy when I get done. The mummy bag.
All right, let's get these in the dye pots. Here are the tie-dyed shirts that I just showed you in the dye pot. They've been cooking for um, a little over half an hour. I'll probably let them go for another half an hour before I turn off the heat, and then I'm just going to let them cool in the pot. Um, I know it's probably risking then soaking through, but oh well, I'm going to try it anyway. Although I may take out that one t-shirt that I did the kind of like the bullseye on it to see if I can get it to uh, do its thing like it's supposed to. Um, anyways, that's what I have so far with these. I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to let them cook for another half an hour or so, and uh, we'll see what they look like when they're done. Can you hear the cicadias? I hope the camera is picking that up because to me that's the sound of summer. And it's funny because at least up here in central Indiana, I've never really seen June bugs. But in southern Indiana where I grew up, there was always June bugs like crazy. And I just haven't seen any up here. But cicadias, grew up camping, that's the sound of summer. Mm, yes. So um, we're going to do the conclusion today on the cherry bark and the Brazil wood. So I'm going to do the cherry bark first because it's the least interesting. And then we'll talk about the uh, uh, the pink elephant in the room. So with the cherry bark, I do have, like, these are the cloths that were in the jars and in the, um, the pot, dye pot and everything. Most of them came out pretty pale, so I'm going to reuse these. This one here, though, I think this one here was in the isopropyl alcohol and then of course went into the dye pot. I like it. I mean it's a soft peachy tan. I'm going to keep this one here. I'm not going to reuse this one here to dye with. I kind of like the colors. I also like to see how long the color lasts. So this is going to be part of the light fastness test. So anyways, yeah, I'm keeping this one. The others I'm just going to reuse. Now I'm going to show you the um, the sun teas first just to kind of reacquaint you with the cherry bark. Now Remember we did the cherry wood sawdust, and then we did, now this is the cherry bark. Again, um, isopropyl alcohol, water, um, I know, isopropyl alcohol, water, Everclear. They pretty much are all the same. Really, there's not a whole lot of difference. So I just did this in water. Didn't see the reason to waste the isopropyl alcohol if they're not going to be any difference. So let me show you the silks first. Or the silks I am redoing matter of fact I just found out that it waiting for me at the office is 10 pounds of silk so I'm going to be I'm going to scour it just to make sure it's prepared for dyeing and then I'm going to definitely morton it um, this is the copper it's a little darker the tin and the alum I definitely think the tin, which is the one on this side here, is a little brighter, but it didn't take the dye as well as I thought it was going to. And then the one with the iron, I just really can't tell that it, there's much difference at all. The darkest one on this one's the copper. But I do like the peach color that's on the silk fabric. It's really pale, but it's pretty. Um, so there's the silk. This is cotton. Yeah, this is the cotton. The um, the cherry bark really didn't do anything. If I remember right, the cherry wood didn't do much of anything. So that's pretty much as white as it went in. This might have a little bit more of a peach cast to it than the tan that came out. Um, so I'm going to say the tan had picked up a little bit more. And then there's the cotton threads. Again, the white is just as white as it was when it went in. So once I get done recording this, I'll probably use it for an over dye. I can't use it back as a, in a normal dye bath because there could be some contamination from the cherry that could shift the colors. Um, the linen, the linen, I don't know if you could tell or not, but there is a slight peachy tint to this. It's not white, and this is the aluminum acetate only. And then the tan and aluminum acetate is just a really nice peachy tan. So I think the linen picked up more than the um, cotton did. It actually, I'm looking at the threads and the linen thread actually, I mean, you can compare it to the white there with the um, acrylic and it does have a slight pinky tint to it. Now let's look at the wool because you know, the wool is always the good part. So this is the silk, nice 
good orange. Um, I think it's interesting that the yarn, now mind you, this is Cascade 220, and I got the fabric from, I think it's Door Woolen Mills, and I think it's D-O-R-R, -R, I think. I'll put a, a link to where I got the fabric at in the, uh, the fiberpusher.com website. But there's a definitely a difference between the Cascade 220 and the fabric. I'm going to get more fabric. I have just decided that I really like the fabric and I would like to have some bigger pieces dyed. And I like the cherry bark on the tin. So, let's look at the copper. The copper is a nice greeny brown. Again, the fabric dyed slightly different than the yarn. I actually, on this one, like the yarn better. Um, and then this is the one that had the different colors. So there's a white, let's see if I can put this in order. There's a white, a tan, and a gray. The gray ended up coming to look more like of a green. But uh, that's the one with the copper. And then I actually had some pre mortented this is Shetland, this is not Cascade 220, but this was pre-mortened in the iron and it has a nice, nice cast to it, but the alum came out the lightest. I was really surprised that this would come out so light. It's, it's not a whole lot different color than what we got from the linen with the aluminum acetate and tannin. It's a nice peachy tan, um, so, but not nearly as nice as the copper or the tin. So there's the three colors there. I like them, they're pretty. They're nice autumny colors, which I think the wood dye seems to be giving me mostly autumny colors. So anyways, there is the cherry bark. So let me close this down and let's go to the fun stuff. Okay, Brazil wood, oh gosh. I finally ended up having to just give up on the pot and dump it. I dyed so much that I was actually running out of things to dye. I mean, I, I don't want to dye up all of my t-shirts in one pot, especially since Brazil wood is not the fastest dye in the world, so it will fade over time. But let's go ahead and look at the yarns first. Oh, gosh. Beautiful things in here. Beautiful things. Okay. Let's go back and look at the um, sun tees. This one here is, that's number two. This is one, two. Oh boy, these are all messed up now. Okay, so this is the first time in the, the pot. This is the Everclear. This is the isopropyl alcohol. And this is the water. They're really gorgeous colors. They really are. I definitely think the... Um, the Everclear came out the, the by far the lightest. It okay. The Everclear is on this side. The wa um, the water is on the other side, and you can see it's definitely lighter than what we got with the water. So I end up going with just water on this. Again, I didn't put any alcohols in it. I saw no reason to waste the alcohols. So that was number one. Let's see which ones are number twos. That's a two. That's got to be a two, and I bet you that's a two. Yeah, so this is putting a second batch in the jar. Now remember, this is the sun tea portion. So this is the Everclear isopropyl alcohol water. The water's still better. Um, it even beat out isopropyl alcohol, which I'm really surprised and pleasantly surprised at that. But yeah, isn't that really pretty? So this is why I end up just going with water in the dye pot. Let's look at number three. Now, three kind of really shows it. The two alcohols came out similar. The isopropyl alcohol is still darker than the Everclear, but look at with the water. These have a more of a peachy cast. This has more of a pinky purple cast. So that's the three. Now, let me show you some of the things that, uh, okay, let me show you the stuff that we did in the dye pot. This pot amazed me. Let's start with the, uh, the cotton. All right. Now, Brazil would normally gives you pinks, peaches, purples. I never expected to get periwinkle blue. I mean, this is just a gorgeous blue. Now, this is with the aluminum acetate only. 
And then this is with the tannin and aluminum acetate. Like I said, this is the cotton, and there it is with the yarn. It reminds me of hydrangea, this, this color here does. It's just gorgeous. I, I would love to redo a pot, because I still have plenty of Brazil wood, and do some quilting fabric in these. Uh, dye, you know, pre morten them separately and, and everything, and do that with some of the cotton muslin. So there's that. Let's see if I could find the linens in here. Oh, there's the linens. The linen came out redder. I mean, this is definitely more purple. The cotton is definitely more blue. And then with the tannin and aluminum acetate, this was definitely redder. And this is definitely bluer. So, I was really surprised how well the Brazil wood took on cellulose fibers. Um, I'm really, really pleasantly surprised. Let's look at the silks real quick. Put my box down here so it doesn't fall. The silks. Look at these purples. Look at these purples. This in here is with iron. This one's with alum. This one's with copper. And this one's with tin. Um, again, they're pretty much the same color, although there are shade variations with them. Um, the copper is a little darker, tin's a little brighter, but I really love the colors on these. I think these turned out so pretty, and I definitely won't, can't wait. I want to try the new silk with the Brazil wood again. Now let's look at the wools. <clears throat> oh, wow. Okay, so... The copper was a little interesting. Uh, looks like a Thulu. <laughs> but look at the rich, rich burgundy on that fabric. So there you can see. Isn't that gorgeous? Now, I think I made a mistake. And I think when I soaked these yarns, I soaked them in something that had had alum in it. And so some of it, I think, got a little extra alum on it. But I kind of like the variegation. That one's variegated. Um, the tin's a little variegated. Look at that. And then, obviously, I um, it must have been folded up in there. So there's a bit of a resist on this. But check out the alum. Look at that absolutely gorgeous magenta. Absolutely gorgeous. In fact, um, let's look at this. I'm trying to think of which ones. Well, you can see. Bottom one, I think, is definitely the gray. I think the top one is tan, and I think the middle one must be the clear or opposite. This one, bottom one, I still think is tan. So, and then I had some Shetland on iron, or iron on Shetland, and it's just a deep, deep, deep purple. <laughs> it's like the shade of the tag, but darker. But that, oh my gosh, I love this. I love this, I love this, I love this. So... That's how those turned out. Let me shove these in the box and let's go on to some other things. Because like I said, the Brazil wood dye pot just kept giving and giving and giving color. So let's look at what, all right, let's look at the sun tea jar hankies. I will not be over dyeing these. These are as is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So, I don't know what I'm going to do with the hankies. They are very thin fabric. I don't know. I just hate to waste these gorgeous colors. One of them I may use as the light fast test one. Although one's water, one's Everclear, one's isopropyl alcohol. And I'm guessing that this is the water because it's the darker and these are the two alcohols. We'll see. I don't know what I'm going to do with these yet, but like I said, I just don't want to waste the color. But this is interesting. Look at these color differences. Here's your peachy pinks. Here's purples. I mean, it's just blues. There's such a wide range of colors that you can get. Um, and then the cloth that I put it into the pot, of course, it was just water. And this is unbleached muslin. It is the palest, palest lavendery pink. This in here, I don't know if I'm going to reuse again. I mean, it's very pale. And it will fade. So I may just reuse this one here, and I don't know. It's so pretty. <laughs> you some, you need pale colors in quilts and stuff, don't you? Uh, I don't know. We'll see. It's a pretty color. Now, 
this is where I started to have fun. So once those were done, I decided, well, I'm just going to stick some stuff in the dye pots and see what happens. So I stuck a scrunchie in there. Now this scrunchie is tannin and aluminum acetate, but I didn't even heat up the pot. I did this cold. I just shoved it in there overnight and just did it cold. And look at that. The modeling and stuff on there. Isn't that just beautiful? So like I said, I didn't even heat this up. This is this. is this. Another one that I put in, and this one I left for a little over a day. But again, it was a cold pot. How's that? Get a load of the magenta color on this hat. Now, I got this hat from Dharma Trading Company. And what I really like about it is this is not cardboard inside. It's plastic. So you don't have to worry about heating it up in pots or anything. It's just... I think this is just a wonderful color. I mean, it's it's sad knowing that it's probably going to fade over time, but still, it's it's probably it's going to fade pinks and purples and lavenders, and it's just it's just sear your eyeballs out now. But isn't that pretty? So there's that one. And then I thought, well, let's put some shoelaces in there. So these shoelaces had not been mortented. I just shoved these in there as well, and I came up with some really nice pinky purples and again I got these from Dharma Trading Company and then I thought okay let's see what else we could put in there so this was mortented this was done with uh, let's see this was done with just aluminum acetate drawstring bag nice I get I wadded it up no actually I folded this and I folded it accordion wise diagonally and you can see a little bit, but um, I'll show you here in a second what I found out about uh, tie dyeing with natural dyes. So let's go ahead and do the next ones I did. Now, um, this is just a white shirt, this t-shirt I put in here that I folded. Now this one here, I put more ties on it and I like the effect. This is aluminum acetate only. This did not have any tannin. But it's really pretty. It's a nice, uh, it's a, just a nice lavender. You know, I'm going to say this is more lilac color because there's a lot of pinks in this. But I think it turned out really, really cool. I love this part here. Love that part. So there's that one. Remember, aluminum acetate only. And then this was aluminum acetate only. And again, I tied it a little tighter. And I actually have some patterning in it so I did have some resist from the folds so that made me think because I did these first oh and this one here I'll put the uh, picture up of what the shirt looked like before I over dyed it it's one of those ones that I did as a fiber reactive parfait tie dye oh probably five years ago and it never really came out to me very pretty so I didn't put it up for sale I kept it thinking I would over dye it sometime And so I did soak it in aluminum acetate, and I love how it came out. It's funny because even some of the blues from the fiber reactive dyes showed through. And so that's what it looks like on back. So this is a, this, I think I saved this shirt. I like this shirt. So anyways, that's aluminum acetate only. So thinking about tie dyeing, and I thought I might just need to add more ties and to make the ties really tight and just wrap the heck out of it. So, here is a bag that I did that with and it worked. So I tied the heck out of this tannin and aluminum acetate. But check this out. Yeah, I'm finally getting the idea of how to tie dye with natural dyes you really do have to tie the heck out of it and put your strings together and i love how where the strings cause to resist that effect it looks like rune you know ancient runes writing i just think it's so cool and i just did a a quick fool's eye type of thing because i just wanted something simple that i didn't have to fiddle with the tying and everything matter of fact um i'll be showing you how i tied these and everything in a separate video but I think it came out so cool. Tannin and aluminum acetate. So this shirt 
Yeah. Whoever gets this one's going to love it. So, now, the last thing I did, so let me put up a picture of the shirt before I overdyed it. This is one of those shirts that or started out black. And the circles here, Sandy and I put glass marbles and then rubber banded them real tight. And then I did color removing on it. And so, front, back. And, but when I did the color removing, I removed too much color. And it was boring. Um, the, the dark circles, and the only thing that was really cool is the alien spaceship here. <laughs> um... But it was boring. It was kind of a blob beige. I mean, not the color of dried grass. I mean, it was just boring. So I put it in tannin, and I put it in aluminum acetate, and I shoved this in the dye pot. And I just wadded it up, tied it real tight. It went in actually at the same time as this shirt and this bag. Okay? So, this is what came out. Now, this is over tan. Um, look how so bright the colors are. This is the last thing I dyed. And look how brilliantly bright this is. I'm keeping this shirt. Sorry. Love y'all, but this one's mine. And the only reason why I'm keeping it is not necessarily because how bright the colors are. It's because of the alien spaceship. <laughs> it's just so cool. Scott's the one that noticed the alien spaceship. And it's like, okay, so it's mine. So anyways, that's what with the Brazil wood and the cherry bark. The cherry bark, I don't think I gave it any justice. Um, I think I needed more. I didn't have a whole lot left. I had way less than um, the 100% weight of goods. So I did order some more. It is on the way, and I am going to redo the cherry bark dye. But I'm going to make sure I have at least, I'm going to say, 200 plus weight of goods. I just want to try it and give it its due. Hopefully at that point that I'll have the new silk and we'll see if, it, if there's any difference with the silks. So, but anyways, yeah, I'm just tickled pink. I love this shirt. I love the stuff that Brazil does. Yes, it will slowly fade over time. But you know what? I'm going to enjoy it while I've got it. And as it fades, it doesn't fade to white. It doesn't fade to a boring tan. It just fades in the color of this one. So this one's going to fade into the pinks and everything and these will fade more into the per lavenders and and everything and that's okay i mean even the scream your eyeballs out hat will just fade her into a, a softer pink i don't mind it's just you, as long as you understand that it's going to change color over time and it won't like i said it doesn't go white and you don't lose all the color um but it will it will lighten up over time but I, like I said, I don't care. I'm happy with the colors. I've enjoyed this dye pot so much. And I still have a lot of Brazil wood, so I may have to play around with it a little bit more. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys join me. And I will talk to you all later. Bye.